We so many glasses in. <laughs> We're using the term nose. <laughs> Just another night in the life of my life. This is incredible. Just have a look at the water and this path looks like it takes you to this private beach. Welcome to our channel. We're Andre and Lisa. Over the last 20 years, we have traveled together to more than 40 countries. Five years ago, we embarked on a long-term sabbatical and have been nomadic ever since. For most of the past two years, we have been exploring Western Europe with our motorhome. This year, we plan to make our way through Eastern Europe towards Denmark for summer. We'll be heading south for winter and just maybe make it to Morocco. So hit that subscribe button and join our adventure. Welcome back to our channel. And welcome to North Macedonia. In our previous video, we came into North Macedonia from Greece and we spent a few days uh, going to Bitola and then we went to Lake Ored. We made our way from Ored, quite a long drive actually. Three hours along windy, windy road. But now we might find ourselves at a winery. If you don't know, North Macedonia is actually quite known for their wines. <laughs> Apparently, the reason North Macedonia doesn't export that much wine is because it's so good that they drink it all. We've come to Royal Winery, probably about an hour and a half drive from Skopje. <laughs> they also have a very good restaurant that's highly recommended. So it's a good opportunity to sample some wines. And they're very welcoming to camper vans mm. and motorhomes. You can overnight here for free, obviously provided you do eat at the restaurant, I would presume. Assume. It's a polite thing to do mm -hmm. and then from here we're going to make our way to see this capital Skopje. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you. Oh, it's very well priced this is what we call the classic range so there's tasting glasses and then mm. you get full glasses you want to splash out a little bit more. You can it's have the ravine. Eight euros, yeah. Yeah. Ravine is the other one. And cheese and some bread there's some wine and we're gonna get stuck in and we're gonna try a few local things as well. This it is very exciting. It feels so, it feels so sophisticated. But at this price, you've got to spoil yourself when you can. Ooh, I think you're gonna like that. You try that before I drink it all. It's <laughs> strong berry flavor. Frannic. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> the the nose of this is definitely much more. Oh, are we saying nose? The nose, now? oh yes. We so many glasses in. <laughs> We're using the term nose. <laughs> I think we should stop to, drinking to, and start eating. It's just flavor. That, I, that Merlot is still my favorite. Ready to eat? I mean, yes, I think we're going to try some of the traditional food. Okay, this is escalating. We settled on the Ravine Royal Merlot. Ooh, all the wines are really good. So the very traditional bean dish here is Tavace Gravace. <laughs> and this one? And I'm that one you. is Turli Tava. It's got three types of meat, chicken, pork and beef, as well as vegetables. Channeling your, what's, what's the guy's name? Alex. <laughs> Inner no. Alex. This one goes out to the travel beans. Let's hope that these are the same temperature throughout the dish. and We don't have cold patches and warm patches. Alex ordered a three <laughs> that meat one. pot and he had a less than satisfactory experience. Because Alex has got his little mitts on a hot pot. Okay, this is really weird. It's weirdly cold. It's not warm, so oh. it's Luke at best. I'm more curious as to what exactly it makes warmed up beans such a fantastic dish. I will say it does look pretty good. I mean, I'm not a bean person. No, I'm not a bean. <laughs> I'm a travel bean person, but not a bean. We love the travel beans, but we don't like beans so much. I'm super curious about these beans. So I'm going to get... <laughs> not the travel beans, these beans. It's beans. Mm. It's baked beans. I can I mean, report that they're warm. Uh, it's white beans. I think it needs a bit of salt. And let's, let's, let's try the meat. None. Cold. No. No, oh, Josh. I, I'm not kidding you. Okay, well, I'm going to try the potato. Alex mm. warned you. Half warm, half cold. It's all cold. No, really. It's a very tasty dish. Yeah, but... But it's not warm through. No, everything's cold. Mm. Lisa's still eating cold food. We were, we were talking about uh, the realities of going to restaurants and expectations. And although it's a very nice experience because, you know, where else would we have been able to taste the local wines like this? And that is really nice. The local ones are very different. And I think they are pretty good value. But it's it's always a battle when you have expectations about food in any restaurant. You, you, we sort of tend to lean towards simplification. So go to a place where there's a bit of atmosphere. You can enjoy a drink and uh, play some tapas and enjoy the environment. And 
people. What we tend to do is avoid restaurants unless we were going for local dishes which we've never tried before. If we do go to a restaurant, it's for the atmosphere. We keep it super simple. You need to have a small menu or maybe be here in season, it will be better. It's also up to your own creativity in what you can produce at home or in our case in the motorhome. And in our case, Andre is a chef, so what we can produce is just of a very high standard. The wine is definitely the highlight. It's not about this place. This place is great. We can recommend it come here. We're just musing about general restaurant issues here, so it's nothing specific. So let's uh, enjoy our last wine. We'll chat later. I still got space for a little bit more. You're going to sleep so well. You're going to... Wake up with such a hangover. Where are we going tomorrow? Uh, hopefully not far. <laughs> it was a good road. Otherwise, it's going to be brutal. Am I driving tomorrow? You're driving. <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a bit tipsy. We were thoroughly spoiled here at Queen Anne's. Royal Winery. Royal Winery. So we got there. We asked, do you guys have like a wine tasting thing? And I said, no, but you can order wine tasting glasses. And, and then, then we were still looking at the menu and he started just bringing, started bringing us glasses. Us tasting glasses. So it's, it's really, really, really quite a nice experience. And so, incredibly friendly. Yeah, service. we worked out, walked out here spending 2,000 dinar, which actually we, we, we left. I think the bill was step. like 1,700 dinar, mm -hmm. which is not even 30 euros. It's crazy. Euros. And we had a bottle of wine. So you really can't complain. But if you do find yourself in this area, you know, I think check these guys out. And the best part is you can actually have a night here with your mother home uh, in the parking lot. Which we're going to do definitely because I have way too much to drink. <laughs> check this dude out. Being blown I think away he's being by the blown wind. away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, dude. <laughs> we left the winery this morning after a very quick slog up the hill to burn off those uh, calories uh, and, and wine we consumed last night. The morning after the night before was not quite as much fun. <laughs> we we sort of wanted to go to Skopje today, but it's already 11.30 and it's, it's, it's not that far actually. It's not an hour's drive from here maybe. But we're stopping for breakfast now, and if the way the weather looks, maybe we just won't move. Otherwise, we'll go late, later today. But we actually stopped on a spot that's on park for night, just like on a little lake here. We just uh, we can't really see much, but the road is super sketchy. Very, and there seems to be a lot, a lot of road work. Some fishermen doing their thing around, yeah? Okay, but first, breakfast. Breakfast, please, breakfast. It's just another night in the life of our life. I guess uh, this parking lot is not entirely deserted. Okay, it's everybody's favorite time of the day, and we're deciding to move. Now, this is those fun things you just don't know if it's a good idea or not because you could stay here, could be fine. In the last half an hour, like 100 cars have gone past us, all packed with young people. A parking lot like this, you know, you come here and you think at a certain time of the day that this looks deserted or there's daytime activities and it calms down. You think, okay, this could be a peaceful spot. Who's going to come here at night? But I think it's probably for the best. Yeah, let's let's do it. That should be right here on the left. Yeah. Uh, this dark patch. you did not have reviews there's no way we would ever stop here these are the joys of being full-time on the road you know it's very different from being in a motorhome and going to a campsite or going away for a holiday when you're in a place that you want to explore but there just isn't that provision for motorhome specific stops and you force yourself in a way to sleep in areas which aren't made to be slept in and it's one gamble against the other it's not like you absolutely know that this place is going to be better and it's funny how much it can actually just unsettle one for the night. And especially if you're not particularly feeling good to start off with. Because, of course, these things don't always happen at the best of times. But anyway, uh, these are the downsides to getting to explore the world the way that we do. Still wouldn't change it. Let's see. Andre's coming back. Hopefully we've found somewhere we can spend the evening. 
But uh, they said it's cool. Welcome. They open more and more in 6 o'clock evening here. Yes, you're in the mud. Yeah, it's very I can't see anything. It's just it's a, a pitch, pitch black screen. This is much more quiet and hopefully we can get a good night's sleep. Good morning. Well, the sun's out this morning. So this is where we ended up sleeping last night. This is the little shop over there. I'm going to go have a look at now. And there's a play park across the road and also a bus stop. Every place that you park at always looks better in the morning not, than it does when you arrive at night in the dark. Not every place. Okay, some places look worse in the morning when you can actually see what's going on. Some places look exactly like they, you expect them to look in the morning. <laughs> and I think we're ready to go and explore Skopje. Yes, baby, let's do it. <laughs> Come on, Andre, bring that positive oh, energy. <laughs> so, I, I don't know, I'm exhausted, but let's go there. And we're going to have to go find something to eat there maybe this morning. Yes. Let's first get into Skopje. Apparently the traffic can be fun. I see there's already a bit of a delay there. That's... Oh my lordy, is that how long we have to drive? That's... Oh goodness, oh mm -hmm. goodness, goodness. Yo, this is like what it. we want. There's still a lot of construction happening here. Interesting how they create this old style and just sort of mixing it up with modern buildings. I think it's really quite cool. That is a serious statue. <laughs> yeah. <Wow. laughs> All right, and where's your uh, insulin shot? <laughs> Go. You, know, you inevitably shut yourself off a little bit. Rather than engage with people, you become more cynical and you just try and avoid that contact. And that's wrong. 